Good morning, boys and girls. Happy February. Today, we're going to read about Valentine's Day, but the first one, again, is February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. And last time, we read about a groundhog, and we've got one more book to read about a, a groundhog, and then we'll read some Valentine stories. First book today is A Groundhog Gets a Say. It's time. There's his nose. There he is. Will he see his shadow? I don't get it. Where is everybody? Yesterday I was a big news, a star, a king of the mound. Every wanted, everybody wanted my weather report. Today, nothing. This happens every year. My holiday ought to last longer than just one day. I don't just do weather. Groundhogs deserve better. A week, maybe. No, maybe a month. February should be Groundhog Appreciation Month. Hey, he's already the only animal with a national holiday, unless you count the turkey. But look where the guy ends up at the end of the day. Shh, this is very important. You think I'm just a groundhog? Nope. I'm also called a whistle pig. In danger, I whistle very loud. And then I go, Phew, as in, Phew. it's over. Danger passed. He's trying to make us think that his name's all about the whistle and not about his pigginess. I can think of a few other names to call him, like Mr. Full of himself. Hey, you're talking about my hero. And I've even got a third name, Woodchuck. If only I had a dollar for every time someone asked me, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? The truth is, I'm not into chucking wood. I'm more interested in moving dirt. Lots of it. Maybe the po poem should go, how much ground could a groundhog... I'm digging machine. I can move about 700 pounds of dirt and rocks in one day. And how about this? My ears don't even get dirty. I have ear flaps to keep them clean. Yeah, look at the rest of you. Actually, groundhogs clean up very nicely. I don't dig any old which way. First I go down feet first, and then up foot, and then down again. That hump is my flood flood bump. It keeps the burrow from getting soaked in a storm. See, groundhogs are always thinking. My burrow's popular. Neighbors scoot in to avoid danger. Some can't wait to move in and move out. Look, indoor plumbing. That's very classy. I told you we're tidy. Well, maybe you're not a hog. Look at his room. He has all kinds of room underground. Of course we're not hogs, we're related to squirrels, but we're bigger and rounder. What? Did he just say he was related to me? Oh, gosh. You can pick your friends, but not your family. People everywhere love groundhogs. We're in the family of rodents called mormonts. So the people who love us are called Mormontophytes. Folks who study us called, are called Mormotorologists. Not groundhogologists or people with too much time on their hands. I can think of a few folks who aren't fans of your so-called cousin over there. Right, remember the mess he made of Mr. Moody's garden? Gardens can be very excitable.
You think I have to stay on the ground? Only if I want to. I can climb trees. So now he's a tree hog too, but let's see him fly. And I can swim too. I don't love it like Cousin Beaver, but I can hoggy poggy paddle. Seems to us that you're a bit slow on your feet, like a blimp with legs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If you must bring that up, okay. We're not all that quick as animals go, but we can run as fast as an average fourth grader. Yes, I can live in all kinds of places. Fields, woods, thickets, rocky areas, or under sheds and porches. I'm not fussy. Same is true for eating. Not picky there either. I'll eat grass, dandelion greens, clover greens, bark, insect, fruits, and veggies. Yakety yak 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 yak. My ears are so tired. You must spend as much time chewing as talking. Speaking of eating, my chompers are just aren't just for chewing. My fabulous teeth even help dig my burrow. They're strong enough to gnaw through roots and, and move rocks. And I can chatter my teeth so loudly that my enemies turn and flee. Can you do that? Didn't think so. Well, I can and do more. I have special teeth that keep growing. Gnawing keeps them just the right length. Too long like that breaks a beak of yours would be no good, he said to the bird. Hey, we squirrels have those kind of teeth too. Maybe we really are related. But how do you keep your teeth short during the long snooze? Hibernating is not snoozing. It's not the same as snoozing. There's more to it. Before the weather gets cold, we snack like mad and cover our bodies with fur. You mean you pig out and you whistle pig out. Shh, I want to hear about the teeth. I'm getting to that. When I'm ready to hibernate, I go down into my burrow and seal myself into a lower chamber so that no one will disturb me. In my hibernation slumber, I barely breathe, only once every six minutes. And my heart beats only every once, only once every four or five minutes. Everything slows down. My teeth even stop growing. Squirrel said, that's amazing. Crow said, it must be very dark and stuffy there. Aren't, don't you get hungry? Look at him, he's sound asleep in that dirt hole. Nope, my amazing body isn't doing anything except getting thinner. I'm barely even aging. I'd like that. I'm tired of being called an old crow. So you wake up just to give us the weather report. Well, yes, but, um, well... The days are warmer. I also feel the need for a snack and a date with a mate. When I find a mate I like, we chuckle and chatter at each other, and we touch noses and rub cheeks. Oh, isn't that sweet, said Squirrel. Very cute. Yuck, that's disgusting, said the other groundhog. I'm not only cute, I'm helpful. Scientists are trying to figure out if people could hibernate as groundhogs do. They study us to learn more about body rhythms and cycles of animals, including people. Maybe one day folks will climb aboard a space ve vehicle and hibernate and wake up on Mars. Wow, that would be something. I'd sign up for one of those trips. I hope there's food on Mars. Okay, cousin, I admit you're pretty cool. Yeah, you got a few talents, said the crow. You're the hog, Operation Groundhog. We'll start immediately. The world will know the hog truth. It's Groundhog Day, Groundhog Appreciation Month. He's written a book to tell all about it. And given autographs. He's really famous. And he has become friends with Crow and Squirrel. 
Well, that was so interesting. Even I didn't know about all the things that he does while he's hibernating. That's very interesting. I'm not sure that I'd want to hibernate all winter, though. I love winter, and I'm too nosy. I want to know what's going on. How about you? Okay, well, let's, let's read about Valentine's Day. I love this story. This is Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch was tall and thin, and he did not smile. Every morning at 6.30 sharp, he would leave his brick house and walk eight blocks to the shoelace factory where he worked. At lunchtime, he would sit alone in a corner and eat his cheese and mustard sandwich and drink a cup of coffee. Sometimes he brought a prune for dessert. <laughs> That'd make your nose wrinkle. After work, he would make two stops at the newspaper stand to get the paper and then at the grocery store to buy a fresh turkey wing for his supper. After supper, he'd read the paper. He took a shower and went to bed early. He keeps to himself. That's what everyone said about Mr. Hatch. Sure sounds like it. Although, he might be a little lonely, maybe. One Saturday, when Mr. Hatch stepped onto the porch with his dustpan and broom, he got a surprise. A package wrapped in brown paper. He'd never spoken to the postman before. Well, thank you, Mr. Gruber, he said. Mr. Gruber smiled. You're welcome. I always enjoy delivering packages. Mr. Hatch tore the brown paper off. Inside was a white box, which he opened to find another box. This one was heart-shaped, all satiny and red, with a pink bow on top. It was filled with candy. Something fluttered to the porch. It was a little white card. He picked it up and it said, Somebody loves you. Only then did he remember this was Valentine's Day. Ooh, look at all that candy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hatch wondered and wondered, Now who would send this to me? He was all alone. He had no friends. And yet someone, someone had sent him a valentine. Who? He put the box on the coffee table and tried to do some dusting, but every time he left the room, he had to keep peeking to see if the box was still there. He dusted and dusted, and the dust cloth seemed to whisper, Somebody loves you. Somebody loves you. At last, he flung the dust cloth away. Why, I've got a secret admirer, he said. And then he did something he'd never done before. He laughed. He laughed and danced and clapped his hands, and then he took a piece of candy from that box and ate it. <gasps> Isn't that wonderful? Mr. Hatch changed his shirt and found some old aftershave in the bottom drawer. He splashed it on his face, and he picked out a yellow tie with the blue polka dots on it. And then he went for a walk. Maybe, he thought, I'll meet the person who sent me the candy. Of course, no one had ever seen Mr. Hatch wearing a tie or smelling of aftershave or smiling, so he got a lot of attention. Mrs. Weed tripped over her dog. Mr. Dunworth nearly fell to his ladder, off his ladder, and little Tina Finn spilled all the toys out of her wagon. Mr. Hatch waved hello to all of them. Good morning. On Monday, it was back to work. At lunchtime, Mr. Hatch sat in the middle of the cafeteria. He spoke to everyone and passed out chocolates from his heart box. On the way home, as usual, he stopped at the newsstand, and Mr. Smith handed him the usual paper. I think I'll have a pack of mints, too, he said. Mr. Smith was shocked. Uh, what, uh, is that you speaking, Mr. Hatch? Well, indeed it was, Mr. S Mr. Hatch said. I would like also like a pack of mints, and if you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Smith, you don't look very well today. Mr. Smith recovered from a shock to reply, You're right. I don't feel very well today. I have a cold, and I was supposed to go to the doctor's this afternoon, but the stand has been so busy I haven't had time. Mr. Hatch smiled. Well, I'd be happy to watch the stand for you while you go. Mr. Smith could hardly believe his ears. You would? Certainly. Just show me what to do. 
And so Mr. Hatch ran the newsstand for an hour, and he wondered if any of the women who stopped to buy a paper or a magazine or a candy bar had sent him that mysterious valentine. When Mr. Smith returned, Mr. Hatch made his usual stop at the grocery store. You know, I'm a little tired of turkey wings, he told Mr. Todd. I think I'll have a nice fresh slice of ham. Mr. Todd weighed the meat and wrapped it. You look worried, said Mr. Hatch. I am, said Mr. Todd. My little girl is late. She hasn't come home from school yet, and I can't leave the store to go look for her until my wife arrives. Goodness, why didn't you say so? I'll go look for her. So he walked to school and found little Melanie Todd by the swings and brought her home. Thank you. Thank you, said the grocer. Any time, said Mr. Hatch. <clears throat> After supper, Mr. Hatch did not bother to read the paper. He decided to bake brownies instead. It would be nice to have brownies to share the next day with the people at the shoelace factory. As he baked the warm chocolate, the smell of brownies floated through the neighborhood. Children gathered around Mr. Hatch's house, sniffing the air. Oh, I love the smell of brownies. Well, I suppose the factory can wait, said Mr. Hatch as he looked out the window, and he brought out two platefuls. Now, what are brownies without lemonade, he said, and he stirred up a batch of lemonade. When the parents came to gather their children, they had some brownies, too. It turned out to be a picnic in Mr. Hatch's backyard. He dusted off an old harmonica and played songs he remembered from his boyhood. Everyone started dancing. And so the days went by when Mr. Hatch wasn't smiling, he was laughing. And when he wasn't laughing, he was helping someone. And he was when he wasn't helping someone, he was having a party in his yard or his porch. He seemed to have forgotten about finding the person who sent him the valentine. Then one afternoon, Mr. Goober, the postman, came to his door. His face was very serious. Come in, Mr. Goober, said Mr. Hatch. You look upset. I am, he said. I made a mistake some time ago. My supervisor is very angry with me. Do you, do you, yes, Mr. Goober, what is it? Do you recall the package I delivered to you on Valentine's Day, I think it was? Yes, I believe so, replied Mr. Hatch, beginning to feel a little uneasy. Uh-oh. I don't suppose you still have it. Well, as a matter of fact, I still have the box. The candy's gone, though. Why do you ask? The to postman took a deep breath. I'm afraid it had delivered it to the wrong address. It was supposed to go to another house. Mr. Hatch recalled tearing off the brown paper. It had never occurred to him to look at the address. He fetched the heart-shaped box and a pink bow and gave them to the postman. I do hope your supervisor won't be too angry with you. The postman was heading down the sidewalk when Mr. Hatch called from his porch. Mr. Goober? I forgot something. He gave the postman the little card that said, Somebody loves you. Alone in his living room, Mr. Hatch sighed. Nobody loved me after all. Then he read the paper, took a shower, and went to bed early. The next morning at 6.30 sharp, Mr. Hatch left his brick house and walked eight blocks to the shoelace factory. At lunchtime, he sat in the corner by himself and ate his cheese and mustard sandwich and drank a cup of coffee. Oh. After work, he stopped at the newsstand for his paper, but he did not speak to Mr. Smith. And when he ordered his turkey wing for Mr. Todd, he did not smile. Nor did he pat little Melanie Todd on the head or bake brownies or her picnics or parties or play his old harmonica anymore. Oh, look how sad he looks. Everyone whispered, what's wrong with Mr. Hatch? Mr. Goober, the postman, told them, we love Mr. Hatch, insisted Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Dunwoody. He gave us flowers for our garden. He helped to mend our back fence. Mrs. Weed nodded, I love him too. He saved his bones for my dog, Ruffy. She loved Mr. Hatch too. Mr. Smith told everyone how Mr. Hatch had watched his newsstand so he could visit the doctor, and Mr. Todd told everyone how he found his daughter for him. All the children in the neighborhood remember Mr. Hatch's wonderful brownies and lemonade. 
and most of all his laughter. Poor Mr. Hatz, I said, what can we do? Then Mr. Goober announced, I have an idea. I wonder what his idea is, but I'm so glad they're worried about him. On Saturday morning, Mr. Hatch woke to a bright and sunny day. He put on his old overalls and went out to the porch with his dustpan and broom. He couldn't believe his eyes. All over the porch were red and white hearts and pink bows. There were boxes of candy on the chairs and yellow streamers falling, falling, flowing from the ceiling. And sticking up out of his mailbox was a shiny silver harmonica. The front yard was filled with people, happy, smiling people. They were holding up a huge shine with hand-painted letters on it. Everybody loves Mr. Hatch. Oh, I'm so glad he was enjoying himself and he loved having friends. Mr. Hatch, Hatch dabbed a tear from his eyes. I do believe he sniffed. Somebody really loves me after all. And then he smiled and then he laughed and then he hurried down to be with his friends. Now you know what a simple thing is just giving somebody a little heart can make them feel so happy about themselves and so happy they feel loved. We need to tell people we love them more often. The last story we're going to read today. Oh, wait a minute. I've got my Valentine riddles. What do you call the world's smallest Valentine's card? A Valentini. <laughs> what does a cucumber say to the pickle? You mean a great deal to me. Da -da 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 -da. What did one light bulb say to the other light bulb on Valentine's Day? I love you, Watts and Watts. I love these. Next time we'll read some more. This is The Very Fairy Princess Follows Her Heart. It's me, Jerry, the very fairy princess. Not everyone believes me that I'm a fairy princess, but the sparkle I feel inside tells me it's true. One of my favorite days is coming up, Valentine's Day. Fairy princesses are at their sparkly best, making people smile. And what better way to do that than a fabulous homemade card? I use tons of glitter and sequins and feathers, as well as stickers and doilies, buttons and crystals and ribbons, and anything that catches my fancy. <coughs> Excuse me. I find it helps to sing while I'm working. <coughs> La, 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 la. I make valentines for everybody in my family and each one of my friends at school. It's kind of hard to make one for Connor because he likes bugs and pulls my ear in class. But you know, I do my best. Fairy princesses are extremely gracious. Mommy gives me one of Daddy's folders to keep my cards safe. On Valentine's Day morning, Daddy makes heart-shaped pancakes with extra fairy dust on top. Mmm. I give Mommy, Daddy, and Stuart their Valentines. Mommy is covered with sequin flowers because she likes to garden. Daddy loves to cook, so he has a crystal cake. Stuart has a trumpet made of buttons and string. Look, here's one for me with a sparkly pop-up fairy inside. How perfect is that? Now it's time to get ready for school. Our class is having a Valentine's Day party. I put on my best tiara and wings for the occasion. I also trying to find all my heart-shaped accessories, but it's been a year since I last wore them, so they're all in different places. 
Fairy princesses are busy, so they sometimes forget to tidy their rooms. Finally, I'm ready, but now I'm late for school. Stuart's already halfway down the block. Daddy hands me my lunch, and Mommy gives me my backpack. But wait, where are my valentines? I rush back inside and grab the folder. I practically fly down to make it on the bus on time. At school, everyone is so excited. Mrs. Pym has done wonders with the classroom. We each get a bag with our name on it for collecting cards. I can hardly wait. Fairy princesses love giving surprises. I hug my special folder, then open it carefully. But what? What's this? These aren't my valentines. These are Daddy's work papers. My, da my day is ruined. This is going to be the most unsparkly day in the whole world. Mrs. Penn gives me a hug and says, not to worry, but I've worked on them for weeks. I made something special for everybody. And yours, I told you what a great teacher you are. You are. Well, thank you, she said. Just told me, you just told me again. I blink very hard, trying not to carve, caw, cry. Fairy princesses must, must, must maintain their composure, especially in public. <sighs> she has to try to get herself together. Suddenly, I have an idea. I whisper to Mrs. Pym, and she nods enthusiastically. Clapping her hand, she says to the class, One, two, three. Eyes on me. We have a small problem. Jerry's cards have been misplaced. So she'd like to give you each a different kind of valentine. Please join us on the rug. Everyone sits in a circle. I stand in front of Delilah and take a deep breath. I love it when you play the trombone, I tell her. It really makes you sparkle. She looks happy and her face turns a little pink. Doo, doo, doo. One by one, I tell all my friends what I love best about them. I tell Josie he sparkles on his skateboard. Cody Rose sparkles when she reads out loud. And Patrick's teeth sparkle when he smiles. Fairy princesses are very attentive to details. Finally, I get to Connor. What can I say? You sparkle when you bite my lip. Rescue bugs, and you're extremely enthusiastic. Whew. Fairy princesses always come through in a pinch. Suddenly the classroom door opens, and it's Daddy. I think we had a folder mix-up this morning, he says, grinning. Is this one yours, princess? My valentines. I rush over and he lifts me in the air and everyone cheers. Hip, hip, hooray. Miss Pim invites Daddy to join us for pink lemonade and cupcakes with hearts on them. We open all our cards and have a great party. This was a blast, Connor said, but the best part was when Jerry told us our valentines. She sparkles all the time. Now, I'm the one who's turning pink, but maybe that's the perfect color for a very a fairy princess on Valentine's Day. And that's the end of the story. So what did you learn from that? That we should always try to remember to say kind things to people, and that's a great Valentine to give somebody. You could make a heart and put on it what that person means to you. It'd make me feel happy if I got a valentine like that. Well, now we've learned about polar bears, and we've learned about hibernating, and we've learned about groundhogs today. 
So this has been a very interesting day. I hope you all have a very happy Valentine, and I know someone loves you too. Bye. Princess? Uh, Prince Jack! Prince Jack, is that you? Yes, Princess, I have stopped out here at the library to talk to my friends. Please join me. Well, hello, Prince Jack, and hello, library children. Hello, Princess. I thought I could stop by the library and visit with the children. Oh, that's wonderful. I know how much you love to visit the library. Yes, I do. Well, don't forget, don't stay too long. We can't because we are on our way to pick up our Valentines and goodies for the Valentine's Day ball we're having at the castle. I didn't forget. Maybe we should tell the kids about the Valentine's Day ball. Well, sure. I'm sure they would enjoy it. Well, every year, right before Valentine's Day, we have a big ball at the castle, kids. We invite all our friends and family. They dress up and bring Valentines to share with everyone. Everyone has a chance to decorate a box for, the Valentine, for their Valentines. After we decorate our box, we set them out and everyone delivers their Valentines. From there, we eat sweet treats and dance the night away with our friends. Each guest takes their Valentine box when they leave. Oh, it is such a magical night. It's a time we can tell all our friends and family how much we care about them. Yes, it is. I can't wait for you to read your Valentine from me, Princess Jill. I have worked very hard on it, and I can't wait for you to see it. Oh, I am sure I will love it. Well, everyone, we need to get going. You know, we have a lot of work to do to get ready for the annual Valentine's Day Ball. Oh, we sure do. We hope all of you have a wonderful Valentine's Day and get to tell your friends and family how much you care about them. Yes, happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and start getting your Valentines ready. Valentine's Day is almost here. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone.